This special meeting of the Eureka Springs City Council will come to order. Uh, Ms. Clark, would you stand for quorum? James DeVito. Here. Dean Kirkpatrick. Here. Lenny Balance. Here. Ken Panal. Here. Butch Berry. Parker Raphael. Here. Tonight's meeting has one item on the agenda. It's, it's the ordinance for the group tour franchise. Uh, Mr. Weaver has prepared an ordinance and it is before you on the table. Um, entertain a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Made and seconded. Discussion's open. Mr. Weaver. Could I ask Mr. Weaver to yes, uh, state any substantive changes that have been made? I think if you <coughs> look at what we've uh, prepared, uh, you'll find that it follows a lot of what was uh, said at the workshop. Uh, there's been some strengthening of the language about the uh, being two tour franchises authorized, but that one of them is all that will be put into place unless there's financial need. Uh, and the, any applicant coming seeking a second uh, <coughs> position or second franchise would have to put in their application uh, some language that would show why they believe it is financially uh, within the city's best interest to go ahead and issue a second one. Uh, there has been some changing to the language uh, in regard to uh, notification and that the city clerk, if there's an accident, once they're notified of the accident, will bring that to the attention of the council members because it didn't seem like when we had the workshop that it made a lot of sense just to notify the clerk. Uh, since the council is uh, the one that ultimately would make the decision. There's some changes to the language uh, allowing the uh, uh, transit department to promulgate rules and more uh, specifically making those rules uh, a requirement that would, if not followed, allow that the franchise could be uh, terminated and withdrawn from the current franchise holder if they uh, won't follow the rules that are laid out by transit. Uh, it allows still for that to be appealed to the council. And I believe those are the major substantive changes to the document. Other than it will allow the, the franchise system to continue to operate and terminates each individual franchise at the end of a two-year time period and requires that a franchise holder, if they wish to continue into a second term or multiple term thereafter, to apply for reconsideration uh, uh, no sooner than six months before their franchise is to terminate and sets a deadline for them to do that by which of, uh, approximately three months before the end of the franchise so that give council time to act before the thing terminates. If they fail to do it in a timely manner, then their application would still be allowed, but it would simply be a new application or a, a completely new franchise. There wouldn't be any uh, consideration holdover for uh, them being an already established franchise. Mr. Vito. I move to assign this ordinance a number and place it on its first reading. Okay, but before we get started, uh, Ken Smith sent me an email and proposed. If I, now he says on here this is the the section number four point two zero point zero nine. Everybody get there to it. Four point two zero point zero nine. And item B, number three. Um, it's on the revocation. But I believe he was talking about 08 instead of 09. Now this, because 08 has a B3, 09 does not. He proposed a 60-40 split as opposed to the 50-50 split on that. One question. Yes. Sir. <clears throat> Don't we still have to second and vote to do this before we're technically discussing it? Do what? Okay, we were in discussion. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. I didn't, we didn't vote. Did we? No, we didn't vote yet. We were still in discussion. Mr. Weaver just finished his oh, explanation okay. to that. Okay. So, 
And then I had to get this in before okay. we started voting on it, so so y'all know where everybody was at. Say that again, Mr. Mayor. Um, he says in his email it's 40.20.09B3. That section doesn't have a B3, but 08 does, and it specifically talks about the 50%. He wanted it changed to 60%, so it's a 60-40 split as opposed to a 50-50 on that particular item number three. So how should it read? He proposes 60 in the second line. Uh, so Transit will be entitled equal to to 60 percent of the published individual customer fee as discounted as provided above in 4.20.10 or 01. The 50 was what was in the last yeah. ordinance. I think if you he mentioned it here it, on the microphone, right, I believe. Right. And okay. If you truly want to go to 60 percent, there it would be a small increase, it would be a large increase, and the way to do it would be simply to mark out the 50 and put 60 in its place. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any further discussion on it? Let's go. The problem of what the license is called. What part is that? There is, in the list of business licenses, there is not a franchise, a group tour franchise listing. There's a step on <coughs> tour license. So I don't know if this is going to be one of those that's read and then discussion of the Wording will take place. <clears throat> that's that's why I was. Mm. Yes, sir. go ahead. That's, that's, that's why I was asking if if we were to the point where we were even ready to read it the first time and then discuss the proposed changes. Because you can are, then you is it, it our our intention then to to clean everything up on the first reading so that we can go through the second two readings with no further I don't know what your, the intent is at the table. I'm, I'm here to kind of gather shit, but Mr. Um, Lito. Question to the city attorney. Would that even be part of the ordinance, how the license is listed in the clerk's office? It probably would be uh, better if it specifically went to one of the categories that she has so that there wouldn't be any question because this that category doesn't exist. But that is the language that we've been operating under for at least the last ordinance and I think the last two ordinances that authorize these type of creations. So I think they've been giving the step on. Is that what? It's two Even step though it doesn't specifically say that. But I believe that's how it's been handled. But... It can be cleaned up since we're working on the whole thing pretty uh, simply by changing those three or four words there to match one <coughs> of the actual categories she has. And she has a couple of different tour categories, but the step one seems to meet the closest. Am I correct in assuming then that whoever is awarded a... I, I thought the, fran the franchise ordinance for group tour franchises set the fee, and then there was a uh, business license fee, which was totally separate. What are, what are we doing like on the horse and carriage? Is, we've got a franchise fee that they pay. Do they turn around and also buy a business license? I think so. So then the only thing that I see that we need to do is clarify the two step-on tour uh, rates in the... Uh, Licensing that one's thirty and one's fifty to de delineate what the uh, step on license fee that applies. Oops, no one. It's over here. Took that step. Okay, thank you. Fifty bucks. Do you also need to change the fee? I don't. Well, if the city attorney thinks think it that needs was to be written the, into the ordinance... Part of the issue is changing the fee. I think it was just to tweak this and change the percentages and work out some of the language. I don't necessarily think you need to change the fee. That's up to you. 
I think though it probably should delineate the number and title from one of those particular business licenses, just so it's clear for the clerk, so that future clerks can issue the proper license. Like, So we could either change the wording to tour group tour guide service step on or add or add a one to that probably the easiest thing is just to use the language that we already have the tour guide step on which we have two of at two different rates that doesn't make sense well they're handled differently when the licenses are issued doesn't say that in the rate chart, though. Basically, if you read the rate chart, one's thirty and one's fifty for the same service. Have you looked at it? I haven't seen a thirty. I don't see one. What is the definition got, of step on? You've got tour guide service step on fifty dollars, and then up here. You've got step on tour guide service thirty dollars, and I don't know what the difference where the, where these numbers come from eighty eight a and eighty five three because two different rates for step on tour service. Yeah, I see your point. As far as I know, nobody is getting that top category. Well, if I were applying for it, I'd ask for the like cheap that. one. I'm sorry. If I were applying for it, then I'd add for the, ask for the cheap one. The cheap one, the thirty dollar one. Yeah. I think it needs to be makes sense. Either one of them needs to be deleted, or they need to be delineated to which one means what for this particular franchise. Yeah. Mr. Beer, you had your Well, there's also a bus comes to town and they hire a guide to tour the town that doesn't necessarily offload onto a tram. So you have two classes of step-on tour guides. You have the group tour franchise tour guide, and then you have a step-on guide that a bus company could employ to take them out to Thorn Crown, show them the area, mm -hmm. not necessarily be a part of the uh, group tour franchise. This gentleman here could avail himself of a step-on tour guide and then if he wanted to take the franchise, then he deals with Mr. Gunnels, but he would be able to tour the town as a step-on guide, which I'm assuming would be the cheaper one. Yeah. Ms. Bounds. I was going to ask if there was a specific difference between step-on, what's the, what's the nomenclature of that one? One says step-on tour guide service, $30. The other one says tour guide service, uh, parentheses step on fifty dollars. So what's the difference? And is there a difference between them and a group tour, a group tour franchise? Should it should group tour franchise be totally separate from step on? Because it's actually not the same thing. Well, I think what we're doing though is we're talking about <coughs> at least eliminating the wording group tour franchise, and then using one or the other of these two. And we could delineate which one you want by either using the word tour guide service or step on tour guide at the rate of and put either the 30 or the 50. Yes, we're still going for a franchise fee plus a business application fee, correct? That is normal. I think it's normal. In most of our franchises, if not all of them, I believe that they have to hold both the franchise and the uh, business license. And the business license in this instance that they have as part of their application would allow them to do other things other than simply uh, hold the franchise too. It, it would allow them to step one on tours that were potentially not going on city vehicles. In part of the ordinance is we're required to have a business license. That's in the wording for the ordinance. It says that we have to have a business license, which designates two different yeah. things anyway. <coughs> Could we not just add in the paragraph G where it says an occupation license issued by the city to the applicant as a group tour franchise reference the uh, paragraph or whatever that number was assigned for 
85.3 in accordance with this whole thing that's called. Well, if you're going to do that, what I would suggest is you take the word group tour franchise E out of G and you supplement tour guide service parentheses step on 50, at the rate of $50. Period. And then that clears up because there really isn't a category group tour franchisee on the list of business license at this time. Or if you prefer to use the $30, simply move it up to the 88A, the step on one. Yes, ma'am. If, as James said, that remain for people, or I'm sorry, I, it seemed like you were implying that the, the less expensive one could be for the one timer coming through town. Right. And it makes sense that that person wouldn't pay as much for one spend through. Well, I understand that, but I don't think our category really delineates that. And maybe we should address that at some point, too that we've got two there, but one or the other needs to be chose for this, probably, to make it clear. I'd rather add one that said group tour, group tour franchise occupation license. That would clarify it. Well, if you do that, we're probably going to have to write a separate ordinance to do that, because right now and we're not amending that chapter, we're amending this chapter. Thank you. Hmm. I have a couple questions. Get it done before the 21st and go back and tweak it after the fact. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> How many group tour franchises do we have right now? One. Two. We have two right now. So if we pass this as is, and it says in here that there would be one, then who would get it? How would we decide that? My understanding from the workshop was that one of the current franchises is not seeking to renew. I see. If they, and if they were, then they would have to put in there the language of why there's ne two needed, and then the council <coughs> would approve or disapprove of that. Okay, so are there two, two people who would like to have a franchise right now? There is one current franchise holder, I believe, that is seeking it, and the language that was expressed earlier, I believe we have one that it doesn't hold, that is, may or may not be seeking at this time. <clears throat> well, if two people were seeking one at this time, would the one who already possesses a franchise, ipso facto, automatically be able to be renewed, or would we at that point decide which franchisee we would like to approve. At this time, there, would, there is no preference expressed in the current ordinance for the current holder. Okay. Mr. Vina. The discussion of whether to have two or one franchise related to an example of like the taxi franchise. We let one franchise for the taxi service if business accelerates to the point where another franchise is needed, then at that time we would let the second franchise out. Both of the tour operators who operated this year, uh, for example, Mr. Gunnels alone, when this came in place, hosted 1,100 tours. That was just his franchise of the, I think, four that were available at that time. And now the business has declined to the point where the two operators who are were currently doing business had a total of 80 franchises, uh, 80 tours. So the thinking was that there's no need to have two franchise holders at this time when the business has dropped to the level it has. And that is akin to how we address the taxi franchise, that we have one franchise, and maybe somewhere down the road when there is need for another, 
one when business has increased that, that we'd let that second franchise. Mr. Penner. Uh, I think the original question has not still been addressed mm -hmm. from uh, Ms. Balance's point, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it again now myself. If, if we were six months ago, I, I wouldn't have a problem with some of this if we were just making changes, but if we clean this up, write it, whatever, and pass it, do we have anybody that's a current franchise holder after this ordinance goes into effect? No. You don't. Because right now the whole scheme collapses in another eight, seven, whatever days on the 20th. Either way. Okay. So you're basically creating a new start to this because of the way the last one was written where the whole ordinance died on that particular date. Ms. Balance. In, in, in discussing this with several different people, um, something came up that I thought was rather interesting that I thought we should at least think about, if not discuss at this point um, when the group French group tour franchises were created there was a great need for them um, and we had used them for quite a while and right now there's not a great need for them and as it had been pointed out at an, one of our meetings um, the trams that they are using are apparently rather elderly and would probably need need replaced in the not too distant future. So one person's comment was that perhaps the former transit director in, in his knowledge and knowing that these trams would need to be replaced in the not too distant future, maybe the people who did the last ordinance were very careful to make sure that it had the expiration date that it did so that we could look at it and think about it and think about is this something that we really need in these f fragile financial times is it a good time to go forward with something like this when we know that the equipment will probably need to be replaced in the not too distant future and our budget is as tight as can be right now without having to buy any extra equipment for somebody else to do a group franchise business it has been suggested to me that maybe it is a good time to simply let this expire and reapproach it at a different time when the economy changes, when tourism is not flatlined, when it's actually something that's, that's needed instead of something that's desired. Mr. Uh, we had that conversation and the opinions of most of the people in the group tour business is that there is a slight uptick in the business. If we are concerned about the economy, not allowing approximately 100 buses to